How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Virtual Lacrosse Summit. And welcome, Harvard head coach Jerry Byrne, um, to the show. He's going to talk about off-ball defense. Um, I really tried to get him to do a whole thing on V-holds. Um, I'm sure V-holds will come up a little bit. But uh, in any case, Jerry, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm great, Jamie. Thanks for having me. You know, I always enjoy your company, either in person or virtually. And uh, thanks for having me and having me talk to your, uh, your friends and fans. Awesome, man. I noticed that um, you got the memo on the background. You know, this is, you know, this was our team back in, in August before we started working out. You know, a lot of V-necks and a lot of cap sleeves, but, you know, we've, we've gotten much bigger since then, so I'm, I'm really happy. But, you know, these guys behind me, tough guys, tough cats. <laughs> It's awesome. All right, so give us a little uh, a little precursor on what, what we got what we got in store for today. When I think about defense, you know, think about it in all of its pieces. You know, you're 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 constantly working on big picture things, whether it's working on an opponent and what they do, or you know, even like the the action. What I like to call action within action. You know, whether it's your opponent does two man stuff or mumbos or you know set plays and things like that I, I like to kind of go another level beyond that to really kind of granular components so a pivot here a drop step here the importance of stance how you look away how you do something that I like to call heartbeat you know when you're in a uh, off ball role and then you kind of re-engage with the guy you have custody with so, so Part of it's a little terminology that's pretty evocative and, and paints a picture, and some of it's technique, but it's really kind of granular, really kind of small, subtle movements, I think, that separates good off-ball defense, and particularly good off-ball crease defense, um, versus mediocre versions. All right, we good to go? Good to go. You know, so I, I tried to pick um, a bunch of clips from – um, Eddie Glazner, who I uh, was fortunate to coach at Notre Dame. Eddie was, um, you know, a guy who just totally got it. He totally embraced, you know, the, the granular, really super specific elements of, of, of team defense and the defense that I like to coach. And, and some of the things that will show or, you know, they seem to be really small, but I think there can be really be the difference between good off-ball defense and, and mediocre off-ball defense. And Eddie was a, you know, a, a great believer in, in trying to do the right thing in how he was, he was taught and, and coached. And so, you know, I'm going to go through a couple of quick clips here and kind of, kind of drill down and, and hopefully, you know, the, the listeners and the viewers can take some of this. Uh, they're not the easiest thing to coach through, through a drill, but there are things that you can kind of hone in on when you're doing film. So, you know, we're going to start here. And I'm going to talk about, you know, Eddie's head on a swivel. And a lot of times when people hear that, they're obviously trying to create, trying to see the ball and try to see your man. The complexity of that get, gets added when you're in the slide role or you're in a support role near the slide, man. So you're going to see Eddie, you know, here. You know, you can see him here. His head turns and flips multiple times throughout the life of this dog. So I'm going to go back a couple of seconds. So this is Eddie Glazner right here, seven looks, and there's a skip pass. And now he's got to make this approach. And so when, when you're a high school coach or a youth coach who's watching this right now, when you, when, when you're, I think one of the things when you're a younger coach or coaching at a different level, saying these things, don't always assume that your, your, your players understand it completely and and they also need to understand in the context of what the situation is and so here's eddie you know here's here's garrett apple who's in the crease and uh these guys were sliding from the crease so garrett apple is evaluating here the dodge is happening landis is trying to fill some space while he sees his man here so his head's on a swivel he's trying to see the dodge and see his man at the same time and trying to stay open with his hips and feet. Garrett Apple seeing his man and seeing the dodge. Carol Lunas is pulling down, seeing his man, seeing the dodge. 
you have this, this is a face-off guy with another face-off guy. They're both probably trying to look to get off. So you have a lot of action going on. And what Eddie's thinking right now is, all right, if, if Ethel goes, I got to be able to get up here and help. But I can't lose sight of my man because I can't remember who he's guarding. He might have Drenner or Carlson, who are two really good off-ball players. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So when he – and I call this sneaking a peek. So every time his head turns – He's sneaking a peek. You know, he, they decided to look away. So this is another thing that you hear people say a lot. You know, so this dodge came down here, and they're trying to run two man to get Rambo away from Landis. So looking away, a lot of people here looking away as I'm going to completely turn my back to this play and be oblivious to what's going on. And what it really means is I have to know where the ball is. So if I'm Eddie Glazner right here, he's, he's, this is Glaze right here. And here's Land, his Ethel right here. They're trusting this two man here. They're trusting that either Landis is gonna get through, but then they also have to be cognizant of the fact that if the, the short stick gets switched on, if the short, short stick gets switched on to, to Rambo here. But you can see, Gar uh, Eddie Glazner, this guy right here, is looking over his shoulder, sneaking a peek. So he's looking away. You know, his shoulder is kind of facing this angle, but looking away. And what's going to be important is, as, he, as the next second plays out, watch how he snaps around to find that again. That's a big thing. When you're playing team defense, knowing where your man is, subsequently knowing your role, and knowing how to support is critical. They're, they're, I don't think there's anything more important than that. Yeah, listen, there are, are there teams and their coaches who are like, we don't slide or we're going to help adjacent. There's a variety of ways to, to skin the uh, cat on this. But that little swing around by Glaze here, his head, remember, his facing that way, and he swung around. And now he's sneaking a peek. He knows he has this guy. But he also knows that if, if Garrett goes, he's probably going to have to step over and help, you know? So the only way you can do that is by sneaking a peek and, 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 or getting your head on a swivel where you can see your man and your role and where you may be vulnerable if your teammate makes a mistake or your opponent makes a really good play. So you don't need to be a great athlete. You don't need to be a freak agility guy. You just need to have that efficiency of movement and have the, the brain power where I know my man, I know my role, and then I also know where things can go bad. So you can see that little sneak, that peak right there becomes everything, right? And so as, as Rambo gets up to the island here, the reason that this skip lane is there is because, you know, this skip lane there, because as this, as uh, Drenner cut here, behind Apple, that, that he had to be cognizant for that for a second or two. And if you're going to give up anything, you're not going to give up the, the dunk on the back pipe. You're going to give up that skip. And so then, you know, ultimately, because you play good off-ball defense, you're going to have to make these kinds of approaches, which are six- and seven-yard approaches. So, you know, the, the, the concept of – you know, I, I say to my guys a lot that, you know, when you can't turn your head anymore, that's when your torso has to turn too, because you're not an owl. That little thing there, the fact that in a eight yard window, his head pivoted seven times to find the ball and find his man, you know, that's something that you have to practice. And then that may just mean something as simple as doing a drill where you place your defenseman in between two cones and have him go back and forth. So, you know, now, you shouldn't have to practice, but the fact that people don't get their head on a swivel all the time means they're not great at it. And you might, might have to do something as granular and as simple as that. So, you know, that's going to be a theme in some of the things that we'll see in these other clips. So this is, this is a really good clip here. 
And now, now I'm focusing on what I call exits, where I'm, I'm guarding a guy and my man moves the ball. And how do I plant, drop step, open up, identify where the ball is, sneak a peek back where my man was, and maybe still is, and what can I do from there? I, I, I constantly challenge my guys that, can you do three or four things when you're off ball? That's the challenge. If you only do one thing, meaning I have my guy, then you're, you're failing. If all you have is squaring up to the dodge, you're failing. So how do you get to do three or four things in a pass lane, be able to collapse on a pass, take away space, you know, just bonus things, always thinking about a bonus. So this is a great example of a bonus. So Eddie's guarding Connor Kelly, right? He guards him, right? This plant, and, he, and listen, he does like, if, he, if I was still coaching him, I wouldn't give him an A on this, but it's still pretty good. Is that watch his man's move the ball. So the ball just went from here to here. And because of this approach from Apple, I believe, this dodge is going to come back at this angle to try to get underneath. And, 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 and when you, if you want to, like, I also like to talk in, in the concept of cost and benefit, or what's the price of that? What's the benefit of that? And so if, if Eddie Glazner, who's this guy right here, just stays with him, that's just an unbelievable window for this guy to dodge into. It's a crazy amount of space. And, you know, he might have to come up and help. So the fact that Eddie leaves here and takes up that space affects the quality of that shot. And I know it's a good play because the guy he's guarding, you know, we always talk about outworking the man that you're guarding. So when this ball moves, he's here. And he's here. He's going to end up like right here. And that, to, to me, that's not has nothing to do. Again, he, remember, he's trying to dodge to this spot. And so there's no, you know, you know, again, coming back to this has nothing to do with great athleticism. You know, I, I really believe that really good defense is that combination of, of enough athleticism, IQ, crazy passion and competitiveness, and a selflessness around I'm just trying to do things to help my team. I don't even really care whether a fan or some lacrosse commentator or some blogger or some clown on the internet thinks you're good or not. The fact that your team values this exit is the only thing that matters. And if, you, and if you're trying to put six guys out there that play an integrated, interconnected, interdependent philosophy and mentality of defense, you don't need great schemes. You don't need some great X's and O's things. You just need to have a simplicity and a clarity around what you value as a group. His guy isn't even in the camera right now. He's barely on the edge. So that work, you know, we would call that a freebie, you know? He just, you know, he worked adjacently and the Dodge came back at Adam. I don't like the check. I would rather this to be a poke check. You know, if he's there, maybe it's affecting it more. He sticks up in the air and he's chopping. Can't have everything. You know, they get away with that stuff in the, in the pro league, I guess. You know, that's why I get the, they get the big money. But like that difference right there between that and that is a great exit. And it, as a result, it makes the shot be a little bit more of a rush and you affect the quality of it and it doesn't go in the goal. So yeah, you know, we talked about sneaking a peek. This is the this is an exit, a great exit. Now we're going to go on to the to the next thing here. So now we've got Dodge coming up. Here's Eddie again, right here in the middle. You know, and th this is one of those dodges where when you have a long run up like this, you know, the, sometimes a lot of times the last guy in the field, you know, this guy can go in both directions. And that, that, that's hard when you're 
I think this is Apple right here in the middle too. This is hard when you're one of these two guys. You really need great communication between these guys, you know, whether who's going to stay in the role. Obviously, you need, you want, you know, collapse and footwork from these guys. And you're in the, when you're one of these circled guys and you're a crease sliding team, you, you need kind of real coordination and communication between these two guys. So here comes the dodge. And you can see like this little pivot here. I like what he's doing right here. He's using his stick. He's using his stick as kind of a barometer or a, or a lever as this guy tries to cut to the back of his head, right? Because he's a really good player. He knows that the better I do my job here in Occupy number 41, if, if this guy slides and he pops to space, the more I move here, the harder it is for, for, for this guy to, to really be involved and to do more. Remember in the previous clip I was talking about, how do I get to a spot where I can do two or three things? I like Landis in this spot. This was a big thing in how I, how I coach. Like your, your guy isn't even on, on in the camera. So this allows him to have a sense of where his guy is and where can I help if I have to. And you can't do that from back here. And I, and I see a lot of, a lot of clips of, of, of the ball being up here and guys guarding below, guys below GLE. You know, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain that, but I guess that's a personal thing and everybody's got their own, everybody's got their own thing. So, you know, I like how he's using the stick and he's trying to swing around. He sneaks a peek. I don't like he's squaring up here, but I like that gesture. And this is a big thing here. I can only go back a couple of seconds here. But watch this. So he's trying to get to the back of his head. He's using his stick as a barometer. This little gesture right there. That gesture to me is everything. I don't like pointing. I don't like taking hand off a stick to tell somebody what to do. You got to, with your team, if you're a youth coach or a high school coach, practicing being loud is like any other skill. It's a critical skill. And being loud and gesturing is crazy valuable. So they, they ended up sliding, I guess, and now here's the recovery. And he's, he's telling him, this is your guy. I, I, you know, I know that that's happening. And because that's happening, he might be, this guy you know, can get to the back of his head. It's kind of why you need Landis up in this space to help there but you can totally see that gesture. You have him, or right here, or is that Sergio Salcedo? Sergio, right here. Sergio, crease. It's, it's a little thing, but it's also the difference. I want you to think about it this way. If, if this was a one-hand gesture and this guy's cutting, you can't really do much with one hand on the stick. If he had taken his right hand off the stick and was pointing at this guy and that cut happens, you know, you could be in big trouble. So that gesture, again, a little thing. It's, it's totally clear to me that he's communicating there. He's communicating uh, visually with his hands, with his stick pointing, and with his words. You know, you can see him sneak in the peak and swing around. Every time he loses that guy, and this guy's doing great movement. I think this is Carlson, again, um, who's a really good crease guy. He's trying to get to the back of Eddie's head. And every time Eddie turns around, he's in a different spot, which is completely what a good off-ball guy does. So key. But Eddie's doing a good job of orienting and choreographing his footwork and his hip work that allows him to see him and see the and see Sergio and see the Dodge and have a, a kind of 180 degree view of all the things that can happen. You hated getting slid to. You know, that was a that was a point of pride. Your ego is all caught up in it. You know, my belief is that six guys working together and have a who have a synergy around what they value, what their language is, how they move, how they guard, how they make slide decisions. If you have a synergy there and a clarity. You don't need to have six freaky athletes out there. You just need to have six good guys who work together. So here, here this happens. And then here's a mumbo. This is a great thing. So they're dodging here. 
And every, every high school team and college team in the country will run action like this, where this guy pops out and this guy comes in. And he might pit seal his own guy. He might look to seal Eddie. But the only way you survive this is that gesture right from Eddie. Because you can see it happening. He's telling him exactly what to do. He's thrusting his hands. He's jabbing with the head of the stick. And he's pointing as telling his teammate what to do. And that's the only way that you can play out that action. Because if, if Eddie doesn't do that, if Eddie runs to his guy, he could, he could be vulnerable right here. But this, this play by Landis is another sneaky off-ball play. Remember, his guy is not in the frame. This guy is somewhere back over here. And this looking off this mumbo and throwing it to this guy, this is a really good play by Landis. He reacts. And again, if that ball is caught, he's going to get, that's a nice lead poke. That's about to happen here. Nice lead poke check. And again, now, again, this guy is not in the frame. So they're able to play six on five above the goal and you can survive in that situation you can survive some some mistakes so i like the i like gesturing i like practicing being loud so when you do drills one of the things that that people talk about in you know when you go to do clinics and things like that like how do you how do you practice communication i think it's anything else you practice being loud you practice a freshman telling a senior what to do you practice the you know, and again, if you have more than 10 pieces of terminology for your defense, it's probably too much, but you practice them. You put them in situations where they can, where they can um, kind of mimic and see the pressure points that they're going to have to use that terminology in. And it allows them to do it in an environment that is less stressful so that when they get to a game, when there's more stress, they're going to have not only the control of the language, the command of the language, but also the confidence to apply it correctly in a real game situation. So I like that rotation by by Landis there. So here's this is a good this is a good clip. You know, I'm not sure if we'll have much more time after this, but this is a really good clip. You can see, you know, you know, Jack Near pulling down to help. You got this guy in, in a slide roll. You got a guy carrying into an in what you think is an invert. You got a cut coming over the top. You got a lot of stuff going on here. You can see, you know, you know, Glaze right here. He's almost leaving his guy for near, near sneaking a peek. This is near right here. This is Jack Near right here. Here is uh, Landis in the slide roll right now. This is uh, Sexton, Apple. So good amount of guys I coached at, at Notre Dame out there on the field. So carrying, you know, looks like, you know, they're communicating, you know, there's not a clarity of, you know, not a great stance, you know, not a great stance around the clarity of, you know, who's in what role, you know, John's got his back turned, Garrett's squared up. So this is not a great exam. It's almost like a panicked slide on the, on this invert. I think they had given up a goal earlier in the game with this guy wrapping the corner. So, you know, they send the slide, right? And you're right here. This is, you know, you know, John is John's face guarding his guy kind of here, which, you know, I, I talk a lot about when you have two people committed to the ball. And I think one of the things, the white team, and this was all the white team meeting the whip snakes, which had a lot of Maryland guys on it. I think one of the things that Maryland always did well was they didn't over carry when they drew the slide. You know, they, they took a second or two to maybe look for skip lanes and, and things like that. Connor Kelly was a really good skip passer. And, and Carlson, obviously, and Drenner, Carlson's a really good off-ball player. But, you know, they, that they dragged this slide. So you got two guys committed to the ball, and the bad thing is you got no ball pressure. 
which makes you really vulnerable to skip passes, freeze feeds, and if you don't have that clean throw throw situation. So you can see um, uh, Eddie Glazner is here, has got to support this cut right here. Supporting that cut a little bit and supporting right here. So he's got, you know, parts of two people. You can see Jack Near has got two people too. You're going to see that here in a second, you know, not great spacing from, from the white team, but they still get, you know, a pretty good opportunity here. There's, there's a offensive player here. You know, I think ideally he probably would have preferred to be here. If you have one guy here and one guy here, it's really hard for Jack Near to play those two. So that, so Jack holding custody of that guy means this has to be a transfer pass. And they don't have a skip pass right now. So as the ball moves, and now you can see how, because Eddie got held to make, you know, to help support on this crease as, as Apple recovers. Remember, Apple was, Apple was sliding here. He was sliding and now he's recovering back here and he's got to get back to this guy. So he just did that basically a 180 to get back to him. And now here's Glazner with a crazy long approach. And because, you know, Lacasio doesn't hold the ball for too long, it's a throw throw. And now this approach is one of the things that, that I work on a lot. Because if, you, if you're teaching slide and recovery and you're teaching crease support, you're always going to be making these you know, eight to 10 yard approaches. And they're different, and, you know, not just because a three yard approach is not 10 yards. They're, they're different in other ways. Guy has a chance to double move. He's probably not worried about getting double teamed on a rollback. He can hitch, he can split, he can shot shell. He can do everything and he knows he's got a second or two to do that because there's so much space. There's so much space for him to, to move uh, into and not worried about going double teamed if he turns his back. So when you make this kind of approach, it's not like, I like to teach it like it's a two part approach. Like he was, the first part was, you know, leaving your crease and then you get to here. And then the second part is, all right, what's the guy selling? Is he hitching me? Is he jabbing me? Is he you know, split rolling me? Is, you know, what is it? And, and this is where it's kind of scouting reports, but also do drills that practice this. So we'll, we'll do drills at Harvard and I did in, my, in the past where, you know, you're doing some of the classic three on two approach drill, but one approach is, is three yards and this guy's on GLE. And the other one, this guy's at 17 and he just caught a skip pass. Because the approaches are shorter in distance and different kinds of threat. So, you know, for, for, for Eddie, you want to try to make this, if you can, a double move, you know? So the guy gives him a, jab, a butt end jab, kind of butt end jab and hitch, you know, Eddie bites on it a little bit, but he's able to, and this is, this is a big thing. This is a big thing for me. And it was a big thing for actual Eddie to learn. Eddie was a really good over the head check guy in high school is to not chase that stick is that if I can just leave my stick there, maybe that'll buy time for, you know, maybe, you know, um, you get a slide and you get a, you know, the head of the stick on the glove, or maybe this guy can collapse and, and narrow that skip lane, or maybe this guy can come down and support. Yeah, you know, maybe you make vulnerable to the two, to, to the, uh, to the two point shot, but trying to, you're trying to just create one more, you know, this situation, and we, we had a film session, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'd, I'd tell Jack Near that you'd need to be here already. You should be here already. Your guy just gave up the ball. Cause you're here, if you're here already and he comes here, you're probably right here. And that pass never even is thought about getting through. So the fact that he's a little bit late, you know, I think he still has some effect on it. You know, I think the combination of Eddie's pro, the second part of his approach, remember the first part was leaving his crease roll. The second part of his approach was finishing and getting ball pressure. And the fact that he left his stick near the elbow and the glove 
affects the quality of, of this pass. And I think the combination of, of near actually getting there, you know, even albeit late, you know, makes him try to force, maybe lead him to space a little bit more. And it just, it's on the wrong side of his body. And so, you know, listen, nobody's going to talk about all that stuff other than the guys who play defense and the person who's coaching you. And I like to say a lot as kind of a mantra is the difference between good defense and great defense is about the size of a carpet square. And you, know, you can actually kind of maybe see it a little bit. It's going to be a, a circle here, but the combination of maybe Garrett's, you know, and this little disruption by Glaze and maybe Near coming into that, that's maybe the difference between that pass being here or, you know, if that's there, it's a goal. And since it's not there and it's here, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a bouncing pass away from the crease. And so, you know, I, when, when I think, when I'm thinking about defense, constantly thinking about big picture, constantly thinking about action within action. But one of the things that I always talk about is, you know, what's the price and the cost of things, the price of, you know, standing up straight when you exit or walking into your role or not being in an athletic stance, the price of that, you might not ever have to pay that. But against the best teams that you play, and anybody who's listening to this or watching this is not on here so they can beat the teams by 12 that they usually beat by 10. They're here, how do I close the gap on one or two goals of the team that I consistently lose to in my league? And if you're looking for little advantages, I think hopefully I've given you some some examples. Do I have a couple more minutes, uh, Jamie? Yep. So, you know, I think this next clip is a, you know, um, plays to a couple of things. One is, is um, that what's the most expedient thing to do when you're guarding somebody? Do you stay with your matchup and help? Or do you stay with your man and maybe give up space and so this is an example here so here comes there's a dodge that's going to happen here and the dodge is going to come back in this direction and you're just going to see some kind of pivoting and sneaking a peek and some gesturing that i think speaks to efficiency and off ball movement versus staying with your man so here comes the ball the ball's going to come back and then this, you know, this is a really neat movement here is that this guy looks like he's going to clear through. All right. This guy looks like he's going to clear through, but instead he comes here and he backs up. And as a result, you can see that Gar uh, Glaze is going to speak at Landis and they're going to switch this role. And so now you're able to like, and again, like save steps, save inefficient movement, squeeze space, you know? So because of that, you know, and again, it's subtle because you're not sure, you know, I mean, cause think about it this way. Think about it. If this is a clean beat, you know, straight guy running right at the pipe and he goes here, and he goes with him, you know, there's a lot more space for this guy to dodge into and to, and to see where he can move the ball. The fact that they shift roles where Landis leaves his responsibility for Rambo and takes this guy's cutting here and, and, Gar and uh, Glazner ends up taking Rambo as he pops over there and allows, now you don't give up this late turn in. Now he's free in space. He can sneak a peek. He can see this dodge. Free up some space, whether he's the slide guy or not, and have responsibility for that guy back there. And it's just a little thing that if you play, if you practice gesturing and you practice the clarity and, and the efficiency of your language that, you know, not a lot of syllables, 
words that are that paint a picture of a situation and maybe a role and a pressure, those are the best terms uh, that you can come up with that don't, don't involve sentences. It's maybe one word, two syllables, two word, two one word uh, syllables right back together. And now, now you're in a pretty good spot. You're, you're squeezing up space. You can see, you know, collapse here. You can see slide evaluation here, sideways presentation here killing space, recognizing that you have this guy and he's got the guy at X. So there was great movement by the white team, but if you don't care about your roles, you're not going to get, you don't care about your matchup, you can really squeeze space. And I think there's, there's some wins there. You can see again, it's Garrett and Glazner in, in, inside here. They're right here, ball's coming in. You, know, you can see them starting to get into their stances already, starting to, you can, you know, he's hunching over, he's, he's bending down already. You know, the ball is all the way out here. I think, I think stance and athletic preparation, you know, when you start athletic, you barely, you rarely have these things that, uh, I, I, I refer to it in an inappropriate term, but, these oh my god moments, and you totally see them on film sometimes. The guy standing up and then snap to attention. It could, means they completely blanked out. They they were doing something else. Their mind was somewhere else. They weren't prepared. So I like pausing film and trying to capture guys doing the right thing and the wrong thing. So these get athletic. This idea of push up here. He's a little man's land. He's not sure whether this guy's going to go to the middle or come to the alley. But because of that, you can see that that Blaze right here totally recognizes he has two people. He's got a guy here and he's got a guy here. What you want to see if you have everybody on the same page is as this ball starts going here that you can start pulling down, you can start pulling down. Having awareness of where you're not. Landis, again, we talked about this before, you know, his man responsibility is here. And because, remember, uh, Garrett was just pulling over here a little bit in this direction, as Garrett thought the dodge was coming to the alley. But now that it's coming back in this direction, he's got to leave that. And this is where Landis comes up and helps. It's, it's so important why when you're an ex-attackman that you got to make it hard for this guy to support the crease. You got to make it more difficult. But you can see the push-pull element of that. You can see, I think this is Sexton, you know, trying to have, you know, having a sense of his guy. But if he's cognizant, this is one of the things I'm trying to constantly teach my guys at Harvard is, is that you got to realize that when this dodge was going in that direction, this guy was pulling all the way over here. Now that it's coming in this direction, as you're leaving this role and finding your man, you can't be so robotic about it because you can possibly make your make yourself make your teammate vulnerable to a skip pass. And that's why his exit, who was moving in this direction before, now he's got to come back in that direction. He's got to maybe move back down here. He's got to come up and help. So you can see how all those dominoes, I like to use this concept of push-pull. Where's the, where's the ball being pushed? Where am I being pulled? So that's just a real subtle kind of movement there. And here comes this dodge again. And now you can see him looking again. He, he, he had a little sneak, snuck a peek at this guy, right? And so you can see a little sharing here of this guy. 
can, and the question now becomes, can I get there if that ball gets thrown in? And that determines how far you might be away, right? Obviously, the more of a threat that he is, the less that he can help. Really important for the slide guy to make sure his evaluation in a sideways stance. If he squares up, not only is he committed and he can't do anything else, it creates a lot of space for this guy to cut into. And that space is, you know, when you have that space, when you're this guy, you know, that you can cut into, in those situations, you better have some help. Will you run that clip back from the beginning once? And this, I think this Chan Chuck, great, you know, really good, uh, Lucasio, really good feeders. But you can see right now, uh, John Sexton's doing a good job of, again, doing, resting his stick on his guy at the same time as he sees this guy. So he's got a, there's a three on two right here that's being survived a lot because of what John's doing here and, and Glaze's cognizance of this. Yeah. Right here. Hey, yeah. quick question, Coach. Um, we talk, you've mentioned a couple times about the ability to rest your stick on your guy, but you can't always do that. So right. it's something, you, it, it, you know, like, like um, being a lefty in, in Apple's position there, you know, he would have to turn the other way to be able to do that. So you're yeah. not suggesting that you have to do it. It's just that when you can do it, it's a good thing to do. Is that yeah. The yeah, it gives you, and, and again, as an offensive player, you don't want, every time that guy does that, you should do something different. So he has to turn and reorient his, his torso for sure. So, you know, this, this, I think this ends up being a goal in this, later in this possession, but you can, you can see how, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's Sergio or whoever that is, is that, you know, when you're in a slide evaluation situation, you can't be face guarding guys. You need, you know, right here, he's got, if this ball gets passed here, he's either jumping or telling him to come take him. You know, so you can't have a face guarding mentality right here. But this is also the, you know, the price and maybe the benefit of a guy who's over carrying a little bit now and, and, and quadruple and triple moving, which can get, if the, you know, the offensive guys at some point don't know what to do. Are you gonna move the ball forward? Are you gonna throw it to me? Are you gonna roll back? And now they, you know, now as a result, two can guard three because the spacing gets screwed up because of the, the over dodging, right? So now here the ball, ball comes down and you know, this is a great example of great off-ball cuts and pick refusal. I, I love the idea of, so it looks like it's going to be two-man. So everybody watch here, ball is thrown down to Rambo. And this becomes really important. You know, uh, Harbison relaxes a little bit, so he's guarding the hell out of this guy. Then he gives up the ball, and he stands up straight, which means you're always going to be late here. Yeah, I mean, think, think about if, you know, Lacasio slips here, they're probably going to be in big trouble, you know. And now Rambo is smart enough as a player, like, I could potentially run into a double team here. This guy's totally committed to switching, right? And by refusing it, you, know, you can see Eddie's in a really good sideways stance here. He's now in the slide roll. And this becomes an unbelievable cut here. By, by this attack. And so pick refusal, love it, rolls out of it. And I'm not saying, I'm not sure whether this needs to be slid to, but he goes, and this is just a ridiculous cut. And, you know, they just get fortunate. But this is a great example of, you know, from a defensive standpoint, you know, this dodge is going, and this is what I would tell John if I was coaching him to this day, this is Sexton. The dodge is going this way. You don't move in this direction. You're moving in this direction. So, so that when, when that dive happens, 
you know, again, you have a guy face guarding a guy, but you know, hell of a pass, ridiculous cut. They're just fortunate to get away from, get away with that. Such great stuff, coach. It's gotta be kind of fun to watch um, all your players out there. Oh my God. It's, you know, you, you felt, you know, listen, that, I, I've watched this game in, in different formats four or five times. They, they made plays, you know, they, I, I they made plays when they had to. I think the uh, the white team, the Whip Snakes, you know, I think they outplayed them. You know, I think that the uh, Grand Lane had a great game facing off, and they made plays, and, and Trapner made some stops, and they got some stops defensively. But the white team was was you know really good in this game. They were really good at, at everything, but you know, I think they struggled at the face off a little bit. But, um, but it was you know it was a game of runs and. And, you know, the, the white team made the plays at the end. You know, they, they, they ran yeah. a bunch of two-man. You know, to win the game, they ran some, you know, they ran basically that the GLE pick that yeah. and uh, Rambo got to the front and scored, I think, to tie. And then the game winner was, was basically pairs and, um, and got to the middle, scored, you know. So, um, but good stuff. Do you want me to do another one or are we good? No, I think we're good. That was fantastic. Honestly, uh, Coach, this, I, I could listen to you talk lacrosse all day, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time and breaking down the nuances of the way you coach defense. And it's so cool to watch all these guys, you know, five guys from your team, um, or six, six different guys out there on defense, two shorties and four poles, right? Yeah, a couple of times, you know. And, uh, you know, it's hard. You know, it's kind of just you, you hope that they did well. You know, I know, uh, you, you know, you wish they would have, could have won. You know, I remember watching this game. can't remember where I was. And right before, you know, they had just taken the lead. And they talked about, you know, all these guys who had lost two national championship games. And that was like the death wish. It was like 90 seconds left. I'm like, uh-oh. I know. You do not have to bring that, bring that up. But it would, listen, you, you got to love the league. got to love the job that those guys are doing. And these guys are the best of the best. And you know, it's like mono e mono every, you know, uh, the white team's defense is outstanding. You know, uh, the Maryland uh, defensive culture and reputation is off the charts as well. So it was, re it was really good. I mean, I think it was like 1-1. One, one. At one point, it was like halfway through the second quarter, it was like 1-1. One one. And, I, you know, I don't know. I, I love hearing the people who complain about, oh, there's not enough scoring. It's like, listen, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, playing in these games that we had some of these five, three and six, four games against Maryland and talking to Tills and Kevin Connery back in the day, I'd be like, you know, the hell with those guys, you know, defense can be beautiful too. No doubt about it, man. And you just made this, uh, you made, you just showed everybody how, how it can be. Um, I've really enjoyed actually talking to a few of your guys like uh, Eddie Glazer, who I know is listening tonight. Um, and Matt Landis, um, listening to these guys articulate it. Um, it's kind of funny. I've actually watched this actual film with Eddie before, and it's really cool to listen to you guys talk about, you know, obviously a lot of the same things and, and, um, and some different stuff. But, um, but Coach, um, once again, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thanks for everything you're doing. Um, do you have any uh, – got an email address or anything for somebody to reach out to if they got questions? Sure. Um, my email is Gerard. G E R A R D underscore burn B Y R N E at F A S Frank Apple Sammy dot Harvard dot edu Gerard underscore burn at F A S dot Harvard dot edu and me and my homies back here will will be ready to answer all your questions. <laughs> awesome! Hey Jerry, always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. See you, Jamie. Thank you. Yep, take care.